In this video, we are going to talk about the concept of average atomic mass. All right, so to do this, let's go ahead and do a quick review of a very important term here, this idea of an isotope. Okay, so elements with the same number of protons, and remember the number of protons defines that chemical or atomic identity, right? So any, all elements of a given type have the same number of protons, right? But different isotopes have different numbers of neutrons. So as an example here, let's consider hydrogen, okay? So we know hydrogen has a single proton, right? Illustrated in red here for these three different isotopes, right? Now, hydrogen the, has these three different isotopes here where the first isotope has just the proton, no associated neutrons. And this is the typical hydrogen um, that we you know, use in many of our calculations and the like. It turns out that there are two other flavors of hydrogen as well. One of them, called deuterium, has an additional neutron here. So we have one neutron here. And the other isotope actually has two of these neutrons, and that's called tritium. Okay, so hydrogen in uh, you know its various naturally occurring forms actually has three different isotopes. Okay, and it's the presence of these three different isotopes that gives rise to the average atomic mass that's reported in the periodic table. And notice on the periodic table, when you see this labeled, all it says is atomic mass. But really what we are talking about here is an average atomic mass where we take into account the presence of all naturally occurring isotopes. Okay? And it's this average, and more specifically, as we'll see in a second, the weighted average that accounts for the fraction here. Because remember, you can't have a fraction of a proton or a fraction of a neutron, right? But of course, when you look at the periodic table, all of these different masses have varying number of decimal places here. And so as a result, right, what we conclude is that the elements that we see in the periodic table have different naturally occurring uh, isotopes. Okay, so this at atomic mass, we won't say it typically, but it is an average, an average of all those isotopes, okay? And the number of isotopes can vary, um, you know, but typically, right, elements are going to have two or more isotopes. So we'll see two and three isotopes are very common, all right? Okay, so then this mass on the periodic table, as I said, it's an average, but more specifically, it's a weighted average, right? Uh, a weighted average mass of all the isotopes that occur for that compound. So let's take a look at chlorine for an example. So if you look at chlorine on the periodic table, it has a mass of 35.45, okay? So this mass, this average mass, is the result of two naturally occurring isotopes. So it turns out that chlorine consists of 75 0.77% chlorine 5 isotope, which has a mass of 34.97, and 43.23% chlorine 37, right, which has a mass of 36.97. So notice that the masses of each of these isotopes are very close to that whole number, right? And because we have this 75-25 roughly mixture, we've got to take a weighted average of uh, these isotope masses to get that average mass we'll find in the periodic table. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, if you look at this pie chart, just to orient ourselves, all that we're saying here with these percent abundances, right, is that you know if you take a uh, hundred different chlorine atoms or Avogadro's number of chlorine atoms in a sample, and you were able to separate it apart into the different isotopes, then you would find that 75.77% of all of those chlorine atoms are chlorine 35, and 24.23% of all those chlorine atoms are chlorine 37. Okay, so then to figure out the atomic mass of this chlorine, all you have to do then is take the 
atomic mass of each one of those isotopes that I've underlined here. So these are the isotope masses. Okay. And then we are going to add them together, but we're going to weight them by the fractional abundance. And in order to get these fractional abundance here, I'll underline it in blue, right? The fractional abundance in blue comes from that percent abundance, right? Essentially divided by 100, right? So we're converting these percent abundances um, into fractions by dividing by 100. So then you take the fractional abundance multiplied by the isotope mass and add those together for every possible isotope and you will end up with the average atomic mass and that's the number that will show up in the periodic table. Okay, so this is an example for chlorine. Let's put together a little formula, a little protocol for calculating the atomic mass for any element, okay? Um, so basically, elements that have more two or more naturally occurring isotopes are going to have an average atomic mass wherein each naturally occurring isotope will contribute a single term to that weighted average. So we then need to follow a two-step procedure uh, in order to determine that atomic mass. So the first step will be to convert the natural abundances uh, for all naturally occurring isotopes into decimal form. And this will give us the so-called fractional abundance. So if I had a 50%, you know, that just goes to 0 0.50, for example, right? Divide those uh, percent abundances by 100. Then use the following equation to calculate the average mass or atomic mass. We're going to take a sum, remember our summation symbol here, we're going to sum all isotopes. So n here is going to run over n isotopes. So the sum runs over all isotopes, all naturally occurring isotopes. And for each term in the sum, we are going to multiply the fractional abundance by the mass of that specific isotope, right? And we're going to do that for each one doesn't matter you could have two or ten right you just add up a single term for each one of these uh, isotopes and when you add them all together all of those weighted masses of the isotopes then you will arrive at the atomic mass right which remember of course is an averaged value then and weighted averaged in this way according to equation one all right so let's go ahead and do a couple examples here uh, to round out this mini lecture, let's take a look at copper. So it turns out copper has two naturally occurring isotopes, copper 63 with a mass of 62.9291 AMU and a natural abundance of 69.17% and copper 65 with um, this mass of 64.9278 AMU has a natural abundance of 30.83%. So we're going to use these two isotopes with their masses and percent abundances to calculate the atomic mass of copper, the mass that you would see on the periodic table. So remember our first step is to take those fractional abundance of each isotope, divide by 100, uh, or percent abundance rather, divide by 100 to get our fractional abundance. And that gives us, of course, a 0 0.6917 fractional abundance for copper 63. And copper 65 will have a fractional abundance of 0 0.3083. All right. Once we have the two isotopes, we're going to use equation one from the previous screen, basically taking the mass of each one of those isotopes and multiplying by its fractional abundance. Okay, we do that for both isotopes. We're gonna sum them up and we will end up with an atomic mass of 63.55 AMU. And so I encourage you to go ahead and check this with the periodic table. All right, let's do one more example. Now let's do an example that has more than one isotope. So remember um, on that 
a uh, intro slide, I showed you hydrogen and showed you how hydrogen actually has three different isotopes. Okay, so hydrogen, it has three different isotopes. So off the bat, you would think, well, hey, hydrogen's gonna have three terms in the sum. Well, it turns out that the percent abundance for this third isotope, uh, the one with two neutrons, is negligible. It's so small that it doesn't really make a contribution to the average mass, okay? So we know that the fractional abundance of this third guy is actually zero, okay? So that's basically gonna turn this problem into an example where you only have, uh, from a calculation perspective, two isotopes, okay? So given from the periodic table that the mass of hydrogen is 1.0079 AMU, and that the mass of these two isotopes that are present in an appreciable quantity is 1.0078 AMU and 2.0141 AMU, okay? So we know the mass of each isotope, right? And we know the total mass of hydrogen, okay? Using that information, our goal is now to determine the natural abundance. So now natural abundance is our unknown, okay? So the way I like to solve these problems, we're solving for an unknown. Let's go ahead and give that unknown uh, a name. Let's call it X, okay? So X is going to represent the fractional abundance of that most common isotope of hydrogen, hydrogen one, okay? So because the fractional abundance of the third isotope is so close to zero, we can ignore it. Therefore, if we represent using X, the fractional abundance of hydrogen one by X, we can then back out of that the fractional abundance of deuterium. The fractional abundance of deuterium is simply gonna be one minus the fractional abundance of hydrogen up here. So one minus x okay now once we know the fractional abundance of both of these isotopes and we know the mass zero or 1.0078 amu and 2.0141 amu okay we can multiply those by their respective uh, fractional abundances and we know what that's gonna be equal to. It's gonna be equal to the average atomic mass of hydrogen that we'd get off the periodic table. And we have a simple equation here that we can solve for X. So I encourage you to pause the video here and double check my work, show that in this case, X is going to have a value of 0 0.99985. In other words, the fractional abundance of that H1 isotope is 0.999H5, and the fractional abundance of deuterium is gonna be one minus that value, or 0 0.00015, okay? And of course, we could convert these into percent abundances. It would be 99.985% and zero, 0.015%, right? So you can see that hydrogen is largely comprised of that isotope comprised of zero neutrons. Okay, and our final example for this mini lecture, let's look at yet another variation on uh, the average atomic mass problems. And let's go back to a problem that we actually already know the solution for, but let's pretend, right, that all we know about chlorine is that it has only two naturally occurring isotopes, 35 and 37, and we know that chlorine 35 has a natural abundance of 75%, and we know the mass. We know the mass of that chlorine 35. We wanna use only that information to determine what the mass is for this other isotope, chlorine 37. Okay. So you've got a periodic table in front of you, right? You've got a periodic table in front of you so you know the total mass of chlorine, okay? So the total mass of chlorine, right? If we look at the periodic table, it's gonna be roughly 35.45 AMU, okay? So we know that's the average. 
We know there's two isotopes, right? We have the information for one of the isotopes, but not for the other. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do in this case is we, we first need to really identify what it is that's our unknown. Okay, so our unknown is this mass, right? The mass of the second chlorine 37 isotope. But we don't yet know the fractional abundance of this chlorine 37 isotope. So we need to do a little work before we set up our final equation. Well, remember, the fact that I tell you that there are only two naturally occurring isotopes means that if I give you the percent abundance of one of them, in this case, I'm telling you that the percent abundance of chlorine 35 is 75.77%, the blue region on this pie chart, well, the, the rest of the pie must be made up of our second isotope here, chlorine 37. So as a result, I can take that fractional abundance of chlorine 35 and subtract it from one to get the fractional abundance of chlorine 37. Once we have the fractional abundance of both of these isotopes, then we can set up our final equation. Go back to equation one, and we're gonna say, hey, I know that average atomic mass is gonna be equal to this weighted sum. We know the weights are 0 0.75, 0 0.24, uh, respectively, for chlorine 35 and 37. And then I know the mass of chlorine 35, all right? This is our chlorine 35 mass. And of course, our goal here then is to solve for the unknown mass of the second isotope. So we're gonna plug in an X for that unknown mass of chlorine 37 isotope, solve for X, and we will arrive at the answer we already knew, which is 36.97, okay? So these are three different sort of variations to average atomic mass problems. You can see, the, see them in any one of the forms. And remember, they all boil down to essentially using this concept of a weighted average to find the average atomic mass for any element on the periodic table, where every different element that naturally occur, every different isotope that naturally occurs for a given element will give you a individual term in this equation one, and you'll be able to find your, uh, your mass there or solve for a, another unknown quantity.